Welcome to Enlightenment of Change on webtalkradio.net. I'm your host, Connie Whitman. So every week as you guys are tuning in, I really hope that you, number one, feel my passion. If you don't, there's something wrong with you because my energy is super high. But I <laughs> hope you feel my passion really because I want to support you and my guests. We want to support you in creating a successful, happy, harmonious life. And by incorporating the little changes that we talk about on the show and the little tools that we provide and ideas and all of those things, Things. It's really, I hope, making an, a huge impact in your life, whether you're trying to um, grow business, um, save money, uh, career advancement, um, scaling your business, whatever it is. At the end of this, for me, when you listen to the show and the tools we provide, I hope it's creating the life you desire, but really the life that we all deserve. So thank you for joining us this week. Now, my motivational quote is by Thomas Watson Sr., and he says... To be successful, you have to have your heart in your business and your business in your heart. So do you dream of being a business owner? And if so, what business would you, would you open and why? What would be the motivational factor behind it? Do you feel like this can only be a dream and that life kind of, it is what it is? What if I told you that dreams can become reality with a little passion, vision, and maybe a little bit of grit? So today my guest is Gabriel Leal, and his story is all about passion, vision, and grit. Um, Gabrielle is the host and creator of the Made From Scratch broadcra- broadcast, which is a live streaming show that airs five nights a week, I don't know how he does it, across multiple <laughs> social media platforms. And by day, he's a delivery driver, a father of five beautiful kids, a husband, and of course, a provider. He's also uh, beginning to uh, beginning his writing career and plans to launch three books within the next year. Um, these books are fiction, and one will be nonfiction. Now, Gabriel co-hosts a separate podcast called Mind Games about mental health with his his co-host Annie Leia. Um, his mission in life is to spread positive energy through teaching, learning, and understanding of others. And his grandparents started a Mexican food business that taught him about about compassion and entrepreneurship. He's now trying to get out of his out, out on his own and start um, his own video production company and live streaming workshop classes. So Gabrielle, thank you for coming on the show. I'm not sure you ever sleep. <laughs> well, here's, here's, the, here's the thing. So having five kids, um, you learn sleep, uh, you learn when to find sleep um, yeah. and you learn the best opportunities to actually go and say, you know what, I, I do have time to do things. So I've had to learn a lot of time management skills to be able to do this. Um, but again, I, like I said, my grandparents started a, a Mexican food business back in 1950. Um, and it was in a small little neighborhood. Um, and of course, er, back then people knew their neighbors and everybody else. And, and uh, when times were rough, when times weren't always uh, the best, they would go to my grandparents and of course they having the ability to, as business owners, have a little extra money here and there, they, they, they would help people out. They would provide them food. Hey, I'll give you a line of credit. I'll give you these sort of things. Um, because they knew that um, you know people still needed to live and still people still had 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 to have ways to feed their families and that sort of thing. So my grandmother was a very compassionate woman and again a very successful entrepreneur. So um she died a multimillionaire. Nice. So these were the examples that I had in my life growing up. Nice. And I wanted to so I wanted to learn a lot of the same things and still this a lot of the same principles that I saw growing up. Sure. Um with within my family. So um when I decided to start doing this, I, I wanted to create a forum to not only find interesting people who, who are positive and, and want to um, find a way to change their lives, but I, I, I also found that by doing this myself, I'm also learning from a lot of these people that I'm bringing on myself. This has been a, it's been like a win-win for me because I get to bring people on to share with other folks who might be looking for um, something that might resonate with them, their message, whatever it is that they create. And then I learn because I get to have these conversations with them and there's 
knowledge of nuggets these people Absolutely. drop in some of these conversations and I go, oh my gosh, this has been this has been a blessing. Yes. So um, I've always been always wanted to become a writer. So at the beginning of the year, I challenged myself to start pursuing a lot of these things. Um, I said, you know, enough, enough, enough sitting in the back burner waiting for the right moment because there was never a right moment. And for those still sitting there waiting, guys out there, that right moment will not come. The right moment will be when you first take that first step and just start doing That's right. Just do it. Whatever it is, like, just do it. So um, I, I finished one manuscript uh, right now. Um, I've reached out to, well, there's a publisher from Archway Publishing who's reached out to me. We're, we're trying to see how that's going to go. This is, again, this is a new process for me, so I'm learning this as I'm going along. Um, I'm currently writing a second book, and, I, and, and I'm writing a nonfiction, and a nonfiction book is actually about change um, because I'm using a lot of the things that I'm using in my life, and I'm journaling what I'm doing right now, to apply these principles that I want to tell everybody else about once I'm sure. done at the end of the year. So I, I broke it down into, you know, for me, five simple steps um, where you can just start the process of changing your life. So, um, of course, a lot of people, it's with their health. So you can change your health, right? If you, if you feel that you have a lot of health problems or whatever it is, taking that first step, I think health is very important. Um, it can it can it can help uh, you along the path of changing everything else. So it's true. Um, people people who, who who struggle with diets and struggle with that sort of thing, I think you, you got to take a different approach. You got to think of it as a change for the rest of your life, and that's kind of like what I've taken that step. I mean, a lot of the people and, I, and somebody told me this and it made sense. You didn't get you didn't get overweight uh, overnight. It happened one bite at a time. So, right. same sort of deal going forward. If you want to lose weight, it's going to be. A, it's not a. It's not a sprint. It's a. It's not a. It's a marathon, not a sprint. That's so right. you got to take, take, take your time. I mean, set realistic goals. Um, you want to lose five pounds in a month. Okay, that might not seem like a lot, but you do it over twenty months. That's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight. That's yeah. the way you got to. It's got, you got to look at it that way, and it's, that's how you have to break it down. So I tell people, starting down that path, of course, of changing your health, changing your lifestyle, even if it's not about weight, it's about eating healthier. There's certain things that you can do. Um, I've had multiple I've had multiple conversations with health experts who have come on my show, and a lot of them, that's what they tell you, is the fact that changing your eating habits will change a lot of the ways that you feel in life. So... That's one of the things that I what what I what I've been journaling about as well. And then second, you know, I do a podcast on mental health. So uh, mentally is another state of focus where you can actually start change, change your mind, right? Um, you start looking into ways again how to again make yourself um, approach different obstacles, setting goals, these sort of things. Um, a lot, a lot of the times we fail because we set really lofty, unrealistic goals. Um, at the beginning of the year, people have 20 things on their list of how they're going to change the whole year, right? Um, and they get, maybe get to one, two. So set up, set up, you change the mindset of how you look at things. Um, educate yourself. That's one of the best things that I tell everybody. Um, Look at all the free resources that you have out here now in the world that you can go find to help educate yourself and build yourself up stronger mentally. I mean, some of the things that I've learned, two, two of the greatest teachers that I've had are Google and YouTube. Um, it's true. If there's a problem, you can actually type in a specific problem to what you're having and I'm pretty sure somebody, there'll be a query that pulls up that says, here, check this one out. Here's a link sure. to this. Or you can find it on YouTube. So education is, it, you can change that mindset of how you look at things and how you approach things. Um, that's, again, another step that you can just start. And again, you don't have to ton, throw tons of money into a lot of this stuff here. So that's the next one where I'm going to is financially. Okay, wait, stop right there. I want to comment on a couple of things you said. Go ahead, um, go ahead. So the show, your show, you said you're bringing on all these people and you're learning from them as well. 
So you as a yes. host, you're not saying to everybody, hey, I know everything. You're saying, hey, I'm learning. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know everything. But hey, by the way, here are a ton of resources. And that was, go back to my intro. My show is all about helping people change a perspective and the guests that come on that's that education piece. Whether you agree or disagree with what Connie Whitman says or Gabrielle Lee, Lee says, doesn't matter. It's hopefully expanding your perspective so that you become a little bit more tolerant of other people's perspective or, or vision or ideas or the way they live their life. So hopefully, uh, Gabriel, what you're trying to create, what I'm trying to create on, on my show is that we become more tolerant of each other because the more I understand and walk in your shoes, the less I'm going to judge you, right? Because it's going to expand my perspective. Yes. And that's what you're talking about with on your show. And what, and then you break it into the five we've covered two. So I want to comment on both of those and then we'll, we'll go to the next three. Yes. Health. Yes. When you said that and you said in the health, it, it, it expands and kind of affects everything. It sure does. So when your health is in good standing, you're eating healthy, you're fortifying your body with the right vitamins and nutrients, you think more clearly. Your mindset <laughs> can change more clearly. You can become more yes. positive more easily because you're sleeping better, you're feeling better, you have more energy, you're exercising, the, the stress release, it, you know, you're re releasing stress. So all all of these things, and I think the last three that you're going to talk about, they're all connected together. It's not just yes. get your health in order and you're going to be hunky dory. Yeah, that's a piece of the puzzle. To but every piece has to connect to each other for you to come out with that different perspective, that that learning. The other thing I just wanted to comment, and I do want you to go to the the three other um, items on your list, is there's so many free resources out here. Your podcast is a free resource. My podcast is a free resource. Um, I have authors from all over the world. You know, my show's been on for seven years. It's international, right? Um, I'm an influencer okay. in the market. Well, this doesn't happen by accident. It's because I bring relevant, kind, informative, educated. And when I mean educated, they're experts and educated on their topic. Um, you know, my husband and I, every year he says to me, how many books did you read this year? And I have to really look back and I think <laughs> I probably read five books a month because before yeah. I have a guest on, I want to read their, their book. Number one, I want to see if I agree with them or if I can shine a light from a different perspective. Or I, I feel being informed reading their book makes for a better interview. I'm better prepared. They deserve that when yeah. they're on my show. So again, all, there's so many resources out there, Gabriel. You said that so beautifully. Um, if you have, if there's a problem, Google it. There's got to be a resource out there that's been created that can help you educate yourself on whatever that issue is in your life to hopefully combat it and make it better. So I love the first two of health and mindset. And I feel like, wow, they go together just so beautifully. Um, and so, um, uh, like a marriage, right? They, they kind of, they're in tandem. They're tethered together forever. So the yes. third one you were saying is, so I just wanted to comment on those couple of things. Now you said the third okay. one is, is finance. So tell me, about, go ahead. Finance, yes. Now, financially as well, right? So here's the thing about finances. Finances can affect the first two. So yeah. if you get in a bad spot, the nervousness, the stress, the worry, the headaches, all the stuff that goes along with it, um, they can they can take you out of a good mindset. They can take you out of a good eating, a good health habit, because you start feeling this sort of way. So, again, that's why I said finances is the next step. Great. And again, there there are different paths you can take to um, getting your finances in order. Um, you know, I, I I tell people go look at uh, you can. Dave Ramsey's one of them. Robert Kiyosaki's another. There's so many people out there who can help you at least break down the at least the basic parts of getting your finances in order. So if you're living in tons of debt, you know, a lot any of these financial experts are going to tell you that you're probably spending more than you make. You're probably living outside your means. That's where you really have to take a look at what you're doing and go, okay, something's got to change. I mean. We ha I had a convert. I had a financial expert on, or she was a financial um, coach the other night on, and that's one of the things that we talked about um, was the fact that there's people out there that make one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year and are still broke because of the lifestyles that they live. They don't 
take into account a lot of things. So finance is another one I think you really have to focus on. Um, and, you know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Um, start with the small stuff. Um, that's one of the things I, now I'm a big proponent of what Dave Ramsey teaches. I've, uh, I haven't gone through his courses, but I've read tons of his books um, telling you how to try to live your life debt free. Now, again, not everybody agrees with that, but I'm just saying that's a, at least a good approach to start um, to at least. And again, he, he as you get uh, deeper into it, a lot of that's where a lot of experts feel differently about what they want to talk about. But just to cover the basics again, how many people sit down and actually budget? I mean. Really, truly with your spouse, go, hey, let's sit down and let's set out a budget, see what we spend, what we make. Um, besides just getting a stack of envelopes and their bills or online and, and seeing what we spend money on. Um, so I think it's essentially breaking down, breaking down your finances and seeing where you are financially. Um, it'll help you at least get it started in the right path of where you want to go. Because, again, these are all long-term goals that you really right. have to plan for That's right. it's a marathon. your health is the same way yeah. it's a marathon it's the same thing you know I I I've read a lot of different um, again different aspects of how finances can be looked at but the but the general thing is that they all no matter whose style you look at or whose method that you go through they all tell you you know you all have to start somewhere with planning a budget yeah no, no matter what, and if you can't take that first step, you're still, you're, st you're going to be in trouble. Um, yeah. And here, here's the biggest. Here's, I'm sorry, I'm saying the biggest part here now is we're living through this example right now. Those who knew how to budget and plan, and, and have money saved, guess what? COVID-19 was not that big of a deal to them. Yeah. It was a blip in the road. Yeah. And, and I just I want to comment on that because, you know, I have an MBA in finance, right? So fine, like numbers are my thing, which is, I'm boring. What can I tell you, Gabriel? But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, my husband and I, he we're both um, licensed, securities licensed, me seven, him six. So we're aware of investments and stuff like that and opportunities. And he's behind the scenes like he helps support sales desk, desks at his financial company that he works for right and i'm sales i've always been financial sales now you know i have my own business and i teach people you know how to sell but he the reason i'm telling you this is every year he does a spreadsheet and he does a pie chart for me and says okay so our assets shifted because the market does what the market does we have some real estate right and he said so now our our, our portfolio is lopsided we're going to readjust and because you want him we're still young where we're going to be working another 10 he'll be working another 15 years because he's younger than me and you know we can't put all of that in bonds and something safe so you have to understand stage of life and portfolio allocation and if people are listening going I don't know what that means that's okay there's experts out there that can help you like you said there's books to read that can help you right. understand you have to reevaluate every few months because the market does shift it grows it, it you know we're we're bull market bear market again it doesn't matter if you know what that means so the other thing you said about the budget um, we look at our budget probably probably two times a year because my salary or my income I should say varies I'm not I don't have a steady paycheck right so we have to look at where is our spending where's the money coming in what's the projection for next year with my clients you have to be in control of that now we have college kids in college COVID hit my husband lost his job my income stopped like are you kidding we had money in the bank so you have all of these you have to have the pieces of the puzzle and anybody that like you feel like you can't breathe financially just breathe mm -hmm. and start with a budget I like look at where you're spending do a journal on that and all of a sudden maybe stop going to Starbucks every day and you might find you have a hundred dollars a month that you didn't even realize because that was your routine. You'd start like we don't think about our routine. So sometimes, like you said, I love how you said in the beginning, you're journaling things down so you understand what to learn and where to dig in. It's the same thing with with health, with finance, with mindset. You start writing things down. Things become clear. It's not just in yes. the ether. It actually becomes clear. So I just wanted to comment yeah. on that because I love finance. Okay, so now the exactly. boring Connie's going to stop talking. <laughs> and, and, and again, 
that that goes that go exactly to everything what you're talking about, right? This go these all go in line, and I'm I'm like you. I reevaluate every three months. Yep. I I reevaluate, and I mean I reevaluate everything that I'm talking about here. I go through and I look at myself every three months, take a really deep look about where I'm at. I mean, I just finished doing this right now because here we are in June. I just finished my quote unquote second quote quote quarter of looking at myself and going okay what 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 worked what didn't work what what are some of the things that i can prove on yeah. what what are what are some of the strengths that i really had so yeah. I, I i i take that opportunity to do that um every three months this is something i've been pushing myself to do so um you have to make it a habit thing, you said pushing yourself but you have to make it a habit and then quarter like you don't even think about it it's just it becomes part of your annual Oh, it's time to do just like, you know, spring cleaning. It's time to do the windows. It's the, it's the same concept. You just it just becomes part of of your your household habit, which is good. Do, do the last two. And then I do want to talk about the mental health, too, because I think that's a very important topic. Go ahead. What are the okay. last two? Finance now, now, and then. <clears throat> then the next one, of course, is, that I want to talk about is emotionally. So what I mean by being emotional and sort of things is getting a better handling of understanding your feelings sometimes why you get in certain mind states certain things can set you off and you don't even understand why and this goes back to a little bit about mental health but uh i think learning about yourself emotionally we are seeing this at the forefront right now a lot of people are angry about what happened to george floyd absolutely emotions emotions got out of control not the steady mind not the not the not of the mindset of saying let me take in what actually happened and see before I judge. Yeah. People just got emotional and it shot off. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, a lot of things that you learn about yourself emotionally can cause a lot of damage. Um, people have lost careers because of things they said in the heat of the moment. Things that are, that you again, that you learn about yourself. And this is the thing that I'm teaching now is um, people need to learn about understanding so that means taking the aspect of emotionally saying you know what I want to listen to somebody um, and, and knowing about what it is to to see that you as a person can actually grow so that's why I say emotionally you have to understand your, your feelings a lot of the times what you're doing because again um, if you fail at something emotionally you're always going to go back to this is what I what what's been happening in my life all along it's par for the course for me Yep. I fail. So learning about what triggers a lot of your emotions, and this is what I've I, I now I've gone the extra step. I went into learning about um, NLP. I don't know if you, yeah, you, you know what Yeah, neuro-linguistic programming. Yes, sure. Programming. Sure. Exactly. That's one of the things that, that I went into to learning, and I've learned different things about um, about myself emotionally going through this journey. Um, you know, what? why sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm maybe angry you know sometimes sometimes you wake up and not even understand why you're feeling the way you're feeling because your subconscious mind does not turn off while you sleep your your mind That's does right. your filter that actually protects everything but your subconscious mind continuously has to work or else you would stop breathing so again learning about learning about that you you start thinking about well, what are some of the things that do triggers are really big in figuring out how you can be successful in certain things that you do. Um, I have a math teacher on this evening, actually, and that's what she teaches her students is figuring out the triggers of why they fail in certain parts of math. And she's reteaching them to rewire their mind. So emotionally, they can understand, OK, if I fail at this, I have another I got I got to approach it from another perspective another way another angle to look at it to maybe break through and be successful um I wanna, understanding emotion gabrielle i want to just comment and i don't know if you've come across this and diaz was one of the uh scientists if you look it up the mouse uh the mice um testing that they did to find out if we carry emotional baggage right 
or belief systems from our ancestors. And through the mice, they're finding out that we could go back as far as 13 generations. So not only are we dealing with our own crap that we experience from the ages of zero <laughs> to five when you're a kid and you don't have control, you don't always understand what you're seeing and you how you perceive it, it gets, it, you, yeah. you hold it on in your DNA. But we have those DNA uh, biases though, that we don't even know they're there. We have that DNA trauma, perhaps, that we're carrying yes, forward. It, it, so if anybody's interested in it, it, Diaz was one of the scientists, I don't remember where they were from, um, but it's the mice and DNA um, uh, uh, yeah. transmission of emotions. It's yes, fascinating. Generational, gener yeah, just generational trauma. Yes. Generational trauma fascinating. Is, is fascinating. It is a, and again, if you have not taken these, these this is why I said, these were all re free resources. And I'm like you, Connie, I take in books a lot. Uh, now, because I'm always on the go, I do it a little bit differently. I use audio books. Yes. But again, it's a, it's another way to get yes. in those resources inside yes. the brain and go, bam, I, 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 something else that I've learned today. That's right. And um, it's, 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 again, these are all, this is the wonderful part about, I tell people about technology. That's right. You can learn so much now. You what? Can, Gabrielle, we're almost out of time. What is the last one? Okay. So we had we had oh, health, okay. we had okay. health mindset, financial, emotional, and what's the last one? I'm curious. Spiritually. Yes. Now, okay. Taking that spiritual journey, that's another one. Now, depending on what your deity is, though, that is where I tell people about understanding what faith is. Okay. Again, faith is something is 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 not a tangible thing. It's like oxygen. You don't see it. You cannot hold it, but you know it's there because you're living. That's right. Right? So, same sort of deal. I, that's why I tell everybody, go down your spiritual path, whatever it is, whether you're, you're, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Buddhist, whether you are a uh, Muslim. Deep down in your faith so that you don't, don't – that thing there is what a lot of people rely on whenever they get into tough times, especially like right now. People went through a lot of things in COVID. Absolutely. People were weighing a lot on their religion. Absolutely. On a lot of what their belief system was. Yes. What their faith was that carried them through what we're going through now. And again, I think these are the five basic principles that you can at least start with. Now, they'll, they'll all expand once you start, but at least write these five down and start down the path of trying to at least explore some of them. And some of them, you, are, you might already be strong have strong points in them already so if you're going to church and you're strong in your faith good that's one less step now where are you at on the other four or if it's hey i'm very well in my finances i i i got that down okay what are some of the other parts that you might be able to look at these are again interchangeable any one point there's no there's no really specific starting point because again you might have a strength in one or the other I say, look at that one first, and then go down the go down the next one, and go down the next one. Absolutely. Um, and it, that's why I said you can break these down into five simple principles that way, and then start, and then from there, as you go along in them, they're also, they're going to all expand. They're going to get everything's going to get bigger. Yeah. As you get as you peel back the onion, right, Gabrielle? All of a sudden, you're like, oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, that's interesting. So you just keep peeling back the onion. Now, you as a driver, right? You're a driver full time. And then you're doing yep. the podcast and you're doing the books and everything. So you're you're becoming an entrepreneur, but you have a family that needs responsibility finances. We talked about that as one yep. of the topics. So you're providing yep. for your family. And that means uh, I have to keep being a driver because I have benefits and all of those other things. Right. There's a paycheck <laughs> coming in. So anybody yep. who's listening, maybe who's in a similar position or, or part of their journey like you, where they have that full-time job, but they really do want to break out and create something for their, their legacy, for their future, for their family, whatever it mm -hmm. might be that that's a trigger for them. What is your recommendation to, I'm not saying, right, you don't, you did not just up and quit your job, right? We have to be responsible. <laughs> no, no. So what would be no. your advice for someone who's just kind of like you, where they have the job, but they want to do more? Well, number one, Find out what you're passionate about. That's probably going to be a lot of what's going to drive you into wanting to be successful in what you're doing. I wake up every day thinking about this now. So that's how passionate I'm about it. I mean, literally, my wife has woke me up in the middle of the night wanting to ask me something. Or she, I couldn't remember exactly what it was. But she said, I woke you up and you were still half asleep and you were saying, 
just give me a few minutes and I can get you to live stream real I can get you on the live stream real <laughs> perfect. So she says, I know where your mind I know where your mindset was. So when I wake up in the morning, I'm doing this show five nights a week. I have I get nothing from it, but I mean I'm not getting any kind of money from it. Monetary if right. opportunity monetary again. If it opens up, it will. Um, I'm, I'm open to the opportunity, but that's not the intention. The intention that for me is wanting to create my form to, to again help people help people learn these things that I'm talking about because I'm using a lot of these principles right now in my own life. Um, since the beginning of the year, I've lost uh, 35 pounds. Yay! Um, yeah. So, but it's been gradual. So again. You look at it at slow steps, you know, uh, six pounds a month is a goal, attainable. Watch what you eat, change what you're doing. Um, these are slow, easy steps. You don't have to go, I'm gonna lose 15 pounds this month. That's, again, you're setting yourself up for failure. Take, take the slow, easy steps to try to get there. And again, I, I, I'm telling people to, to look at these things because again, I'm, I'm applying them to my own life. That's why I said, once I have a kind of the research that I want to, that's where I'm going to go write it down and put it down in a book yep. and share it and, and share it with what I, what my experiences were in each one of these individual steps. Um, because again, I think each one of them, if we instill them in our life and we're proactive in change, and that's one of the things that I tell people, be proactive in changing your own life. Absolutely. If if you do not, change will come for you anyway. Might my not be what you example, want. My perfect example was back in March, something called COVID-19. Nobody who was not ready for that. We were so many people were reacting to what was going on. And the people who are already proactive in their lives were saying, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work from home. I'm going to do these things. I wanted to change these things. Life, guess what? It was such an easy transition for them. They did not lose in productivity. They did not lose in scheduling. They did not lose in a lot of things. And these were people that were actually stars at, at the beginning of that time there because they were ready to go. They already knew how to do this. It's true. They were, I didn't have to learn how to Zoom. I didn't learn how to do all this because they were already set right. doing these That's things. Right. So. They're pro, they were proactive in what they were trying to do. Um, and it so helps. For some people, and I've had people that said, you know what? I haven't been affected at all, except I can't go out to the store. That was the biggest change for them. So, um, it's true, the human other, contact. Other, <laughs> other than that, you know, that's why I said, if you're proactive in your life and you're proactive in the way that you change, and again, that's why I push reevaluating yourself. This is great. I love I love that you start this journey at the beginning of the year. Reevaluate yourself. Um, sometimes you guess what you're not gonna. I haven't hit every goal that I set out for myself, but that's part of the process. Absolutely. And say, you know, I I I, I for example, I had said I at least wanted to have my book first book published by June. It hasn't happened, but you know what? I did have a manuscript. That's good. So that's part of it. So, but again, that's. Well, I wrote these down. These were the things that I pushed at, and these are what I what I say. I you have to start taking those steps, in whatever it is you do, and that's what I tell them. Be find what you're passionate about first, Connie, and then go from there. Yeah, and, we're, we're out of time, Gabriel. But it, you're right, and being <laughs> proactive is half the battle. Uh, uh, when you're in motion pivoting and shifting gears becomes so much easier than when you're at a standstill and then trying to get going or movement from that point. Once you're in, in motion, the fluidity, meaning you can shift left, shift right, it becomes very easy. And that's how opportunities find you because you see them also, because again, you're in motion, you're not just standing still where the opportunity might be five feet ahead of you, but you're not there yet. So you're missing it. So um, I believe in, in being proactive as well. Guys, if you want more information or you'd like to follow Gabriel on his podcast, um, go to the website. It's made from scratch podcast.com. Podcast yep. And if you have a question for you, they can do made from scratch podcast at outlook.com if they want to email you, correct? Yes. And then I'll give you all the usual handles, guys. I am on YouTube. You can check me out at www.youtube.com 
forward slash to letter C forward slash made from scratch broadcast on YouTube. You can go catch all my past episodes. I am on Facebook as well. And the same thing, facebook.com uh, forward slash made from scratch podcast on Facebook. Uh, that's my uh, group page. And then I also on Twitter at MFSB live on Twitter as well. And I am on LinkedIn. So if you want to connect with me at their uh, just search Gabriel E. Leal on LinkedIn in a search. I will pull up, connect with me, send me an invitation or um, a connection request. I try to connect with everybody. I try to answer everybody's um, invitations. They send it to me personally. So if you want to reach out to me, I am so open to connecting everybody. Awesome. And Gabriel, on your website, do you have all those links for Twitter, LinkedIn and everything? Like I have the icons. Uh, uh, yeah. It yes, click and yes. it takes you, you right to on, the, yeah. You can click on the icons there. You can find the links to awesome. the podcast version of the show as well. And Perfect. just about everything that I put on there as well. Awesome. Thank so. you. So one stop shop. Um, again, I'll read it one more time. <laughs> it's made from scratch podcast.com. Check it out. Dot com. Check yes. it out. And guys, um, go to my website, WhitmanAssos.com slash CSA and take your communication style assessment, free resource I offer to everyone. Um, you find out what your communication style is, what are your strengths and superpowers, and oh, by the way, we have blind spots. What are your blind spots? <laughs> and find out yes. if you're a heartful advocate. Are you a stimulating motivator, innovative organizer, observing designer, or maybe you're a precise assessor. And I'd love for you to tell me after you take your assessment and learn about each of the styles what you think Gabrielle style and mine is I know what you are Gabrielle and I know what I am hint hint we're both stimulating <laughs> motivators <laughs> so check that out again Whitman is com slash CSA um, Gabriel thank you so much for coming on I know you have a jam-packed hey, day Pam. I so appreciate your time your insight and for sharing your journey to let people know movement just move forward make a decision one little decision and start there you don't have to start on all five of the topics that we talked about today pick one and just dig one. in and move forward keep it easy simple and you'll actually make progress when you start to go into overload we don't move because it's it's overwhelming to us so move forward yeah. um yeah thank you so much gabriel for your insight and, and sharing Anytime. your personal story it's um it's nice to meet a kindred spirit. Uh, so, there we go, right? Yeah, so thank you it so is. much. So don't don't go yet. Uh, don't you go yet. And you guys, I want to thank you for joining us. Um, and I, I thank you for joining me weekly as we question, build, and discover that change, whatever that means to you, you've got this. We have resources. There are tools. Um, keep it simple. Create the change embrace the change maybe is a better way to say it um, and just take one little step forward thank you for joining us this week you've been listening to enlightenment of change with me your host connie whitman on webtalkradio.net i wish you all an inspired week and i one little piece of change is all you have to do thanks everybody